Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a member of the community team working in the Cyberpunk Red system for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. In this video, I'll be showcasing some of the new features and upcoming changes in the 0.81 release, which is due to be released in August of 2022. This is expected to be the last release of the Foundry version 9 system. Uh, and as always, make sure to back up your system and your game files and worlds before up, uh, proceeding with the upgrade. Uh, okay, let's take a look. So before I proceed with migrating my world to uh, 0.81, I just wanted to showcase that there are going to be some uh, migrations involved, which uh, essentially means that some character stats or attributes that you have set are going to be migrated uh, to use active effects properly as a part of this upgrade. So for this example, I have a netrunner here named Iceman, and we can see here at the moment that he has a uh, a Razor um, Black Eyes program, uh, sorry, a booster program. And what the Razor does is it actually modifies your ability to make cloak checks. So we can actually see if we bring up a cloak check on the sub deck, it has the uh, mods or the res boosters listed here. But what we're gonna do as a part of the migration is it's actually gonna change how this is uh, influenced and how the check is made. So uh, not much is really needed on your part, but I wanna showcase this as an example. So what I'll do is I'll close out of this one, we'll migrate the world to 0.81 and I'll show uh, show case what it looks like once we've migrated. Okay, so I'm just about to launch into the world I have here. I've just migrated it to 0 0.81. Uh, as we jump into the world, it'll say that it's migrating some of the data as well. And we'll see that as we jump in, it'll also come up with an info page, which I highly recommend that you read through. So this could change depending on uh, how big of a world you have. And by that, I mean how much, uh, how many actors or NPCs, how many items you have and everything like that. So it could take anything from a few seconds to a few minutes, but the best thing to do is just not touch anything until it completes migrating and the uh, the page, the sort of the little info bars up here disappear. Uh, we can see here that it has some special instructions or at least information about what's happening in this release. It talks about how things have been modified and everything like that as well. So make sure you give this a full read so you understand everything that's happening, especially in relation to active effects. In relation to the character I mentioned earlier, we're bringing him up here. We know that we had the uh, Eraser Booster um, sort of effect on the character. We can actually now see as a part of this migration, it's moved it over to here, which we can actually see just to have a bit of an understanding from it is it's named it a migrated program effect. So that's good. So we know where it's coming from. We can see that it's saying here with cloak provider plus two. We can see the source is for a razor and specifically this is when rest. So this won't provide a boost to our cloak skill or our cloak role unless the uh, program is rezzed. So that's good. So you actually have that sort of functionality to, uh, to understand that sort of um, from that perspective as well. Using another example that's actually been added in this release as well, let's take a look at some of the drug items. So we come over here to the compendium. We can see that we have a new item directory here, which is drugs. And uh, it has all of the uh, sort of drug items that are uh, in the uh, Cyberpunk Red core rulebook. All we'll do is we open up our character bring him over here. Let's say that we want to give him some synth coke. So what we'll do is we'll drag this across to here. We bring up the item. We can see that it talks about effects on this page as well, right? So we can see that the primary uh, effect that it's going to be providing is a ref plus one, but then there are addictions as well that if they say fail their uh, addiction check that they have to roll or they have to add to their, to the character as a sort of a, a part of the addiction uh, that they have as well. So what we could do here is, um, uh, we can essentially try and consume the item, which we'll do here. We'll say confirm. It'll say that we've uh, consumed it as well. And then what we can do here is for uh, gameplay purposes, um, you can essentially toggle it on your character sheet as well. This is modifiable, which I'll show in just a moment, but we can see here if we want to add the primary effect, which is to add ref plus one. So we can see here, say the ref is six. We'll toggle this one on here by just clicking the toggle. And we can see it's modified the value to ref seven here, just like that. Uh, so this is really useful to have this ability because as you can see here, you can create your own effects. So this gives you the ability and uh, customization to add all sorts of different effects as well, which is really handy for different things. So let's take a look and see what options we have when trying to create an effect. We click the create effect button here. It'll create a new effect under active effects. What we can do is we can go edit and we can take a look. We'll go look at effects here. We can see that it has an option, sort of a value here saying the key, the value and the change mode. So we'll do is we'll press plus. We can see here that it's asking us, what is this for? So we could say we wanted to modify a particular skill. We could go through any of these that we have on the character. 
we could go combat, say that we just want to add the number of hands that they had, um, you know, for some sort of, um, you know, sort of purpose, uh, or you can modify any of these as well. You wanted to increase their walking speed for some purpose as well. Say you make your own drug that increases their movement. You have the ability to add this as an effect and, and to items and everything like that as well. Um, there are a few different attributes that you can change. So including net running, if you want to modify net running abilities, role, if you want to modify uh, a character's role ability as well. So if you want to add different things and different um, bits and pieces to modify their, their character role. Uh, skill again that we just mentioned before stats if you just wanted to modify a raw stat attribute uh, and then custom keys which requires a little bit more work but allows you to make further changes as well um, so you can go through there you can change things um, you can add subtract and whatnot and then so there you can basically provide the value so if you wanted to add an extra pair of hands for whatever reason you could say one submit those changes and then essentially what that means is from a gameplay purpose that this character could then equip multiple uh, handheld items for the, uh, the purposes of active effects. So another really cool feature in this release is a essentially uh, the ability to sell back to vendors. So in a few previous releases, we introduced the concept of containers or like uh, container vendors, uh, which essentially means that you're able to buy uh, items from an NPC essentially in terms of buying items from them. Uh, what this release introduces is the ability to set up a vendor that buys items from a player. So what we do is we open up this vendor say that we have here, we can configure the shop by clicking this button here if they're under a shop attribute. We can say what we want to configure. So let's say that this vendor is willing to buy, uh, let's say that they're willing to buy cyberware. Talk about the uh, buy at percentage, which indicates at what percentage that they're willing to buy the items from. So let's say maybe that they're a bit sketchy, they're having to um, put a bit of, you know, the bit of their own risk into making the purchases. Let's say that they do it at a really low buy at percentage, but they're willing to take the, you know, maybe black market goods off the, uh, off the player. So we say that, let's say that they have some money in their account. Let's give them, let's say, that there's a one euro bucks set that to their account and what we could do if we then say uh, have a player try to sell items to the vendor that'll actually uh, allow them to uh you know buy the items from them okay so i've just switched over to the uh essentially the player login so we can see here that we only have access to our iceman uh, character and what this character is going to do is he's going to try and sell some of the cyberware that he's collected so we bring up the vendor screen here we can see that we've got the trade with ice man you can see the vendor has say 9001 euro bucks we'll bring up our character sheet we've got our cyber legs and what we'll do is we'll try and make the trade or make the offer so we'll go bring it across we'll make the offer and it'll basically confirm okay you know um we're basically offering uh uh 30 or 30 percent of the cost of the cyber leg and we'll say yep uh, that's taken from their Eurobox inventory, added to our character as well. So this gives you the flexibility to have your characters sell items potentially that they're willing to offset or offload uh, directly, uh, potentially without you know the game master's direct involvement, which can help in terms of some downtime activities between uh, between major game sessions and encounters. The next thing has been long requested by uh, some members of the community is the ability to perform face down actions. Um, so what that means is if you read the core rulebook, there's the ability to do um, essentially a face down with a, uh, like a, a, a sort of an enemy or someone that you're going up against and you're essentially using your rep reputation against the, uh, the other character or the NPC. So we bring up our character sheet here. We can actually see we have a few more things to track under our life path. We can see here that we are able to track our reputation. It uses a similar ledger system where you can edit it and you can also see your changes. And then if you go to the, uh, here on the fight tab, you can actually see that there's this little sort of emoji button here. Click this one. It'll actually prompt you to roll your face down. Uh, it'll basically then also track your reputation that you've modified as well, allowing you to make a face down check directly against the, uh, the opponent that you're trying to face down against. While many of us may play in English, did you know that the system can now actually support four different languages? Uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, German, French, and Italian are now all supported in the system. While three of these, French, Italian, and Portuguese, were supported in uh, previous releases, I believe uh, 0.80, um, uh, we now support German as of this release as well. It's quite straightforward to switch to the uh, language that you wish to choose. And I wish to thank all of the translators that have been helping us in our community to make sure that we're able to provide this to everyone uh, in this release. And here's just a quick example of how to switch your game system language. If you go to configure settings on the right over here, go to language preference, and let's say that we want to use German. Can now see if we bring up our character sheet here that uh, 
almost all of the uh, sort of uh, system settings and whatnot are in uh, German that you're able to refer to. Uh, so again, thank you to all of our community translators that have comp uh, contributed their time and effort into this project. Uh, it's very much appreciated and we hope that this is able to be shared with uh, you know, many different people all around the world. If you're anything like me and my players, uh, occasionally you'll forget to spend the luck that you have. Uh, in this release as well, there is the ability now to choose how much luck you wish to spend, and you're able to do that and have it deducted from your character sheet. So bring up Iceman here, we can see that he currently has a luck of six, six of six, but let's say that he needs to make a check that he really, really needs to get. Let's say that he needs to uh, perceive something and really do quite well at it. We can see here that we have the ability to spend luck. Let's say that we want that to be a six, confirm it'll remove the luck from the stat and we'll actually see it applied as a bonus to the roll uh, and just like that you can make sure that you actually remember to make use of your luck each uh, each and every session and look, that was just a quick demonstration of what's available in the 0.81 release. Um, as always, we do have a variety of different bug fixes that you not don't always see. So I definitely recommend checking out the change log, which I'll link in the description below, just so you can understand everything that's happened. Uh, and thank you again to all of our community contributors, everyone that contributes to the project. If you'd like to help uh, join us, I'll provide links to our, our Discord that you're able to contribute to as well, as well as our public GitLab community, which you can uh, track issues, changes, and upcoming features on the dev branch as well. Uh, and with that, I'll leave you to it.